It's just two hours until British boxer Amir Khan's first ever fight in America. I stay very quiet and just make my way to the hotel, do all my prayers in my room. I feel so good and light, you know, when I after my praying and everything. I feel so good. Who's the man? Who's the man? Who's the man? Who's the man? In his hometown in England, Amir's friends have been waiting up all night for the fight to start. I couldn't go to New York, so kind of brought the atmosphere here. Got a big screen going. I'm confident that Amir will do good. He represents all of us. He's not, not only the Muslim community, but everyone. I'm sure he'll knock him out in about six rounds. Well before that, well before that. Third round. It feels like home when I step in the ring or whatever. It just feels so comfortable. Uh, let's get ready to rumble! Round number one, scheduled for 12. <laughs> So far, so good. Two out of two. Two out of two. Hot performance thus far. I think that was the moment that Malik Naji went from thinking he could win to suddenly realising he was only essentially in there boxing for pride. I picked up the pace and he just couldn't stand to the pace. It's easy for Amir Khan right now. Like that. Shots with more convincing. Good, good, good. The referee steps in to end the fight in round 11. Khan is victorious. Relax now. <laughs> I wonder why. <laughs> it's all over. Victory on the back. And in the 11th round, I remember coming back in the 10th, and he goes to me, I'm here, go in there and finish this guy off. You know, send a statement across the world, and I did that. I went out there, and a minute later, I stopped him. I feel good, man. I'm a bit back. tired. But, you know, I'm happy Watch with the first back. first one's over with. Watch your back, guys. Watch your back. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. One week after the fight, Khan is back home in Bolton. This area is Lostock in Bolton, and I live in this area. We're just going to go past my house. You know, I've got a nice house, I've got a big bungalow. I'm a one-man team that does a job with no glory. Hang on, boys, all right. I'm going to come, come back in a bit anyway. I'm going to go, go to the gym, I'll come back in a bit. Even though, you know, I'm a world, worldwide, everyone knows who Amir Khan is, I'm still normal. You know, I'm never going to change. In the large Asian community in Bolton where he grew up, Amir stands proud as a prominent Muslim achieving great heights in sport. Amir Khan, yeah, he's a yeah. sick boxer. He's a good yeah, boxer. He's, a really good boxer. he's like, yeah, from zero to zero, he's basically. Like, now he's, he's, like, he's like a normal youth and he's just gone, like, you know, big, big. I think I'm probably the only Asian Muslim um, naming, like, role modeling in Britain. There's no other uh, Muslim. Pakistani, whoever, Indian, whoever, um, role model in the country. And that does put pressure on you, but I'm only doing what I love to do. So basically, it's going to boost up the confidence of, like, little Asians that want to, like, you know, go far in life, like, do boxing and stuff like that. He's going to... Like him? Yeah. He's a boxer. You subscribe by yeah. him? Yeah. Thank you much, Next time you find in 10 years. Yeah, this first professional bout in the same month as the July 7th bombings in London. Obviously, they had a huge effect on people. And here was this kid, this British Muslim kid. He'll happily stand up there and say he's British. He doesn't say he's Muslim first. He's shown that there is a path for British Asian kids through sports and through belief in Britain. A bit different to a boxing kit. Yeah. <laughs> skinny legs. <laughs> you going to win? Yeah, always win. It's always great to get back home. Uh, you know, with friends, families, everybody. And enjoy fish and chips. One week since the fight, and the scars on Khan's face are barely visible. Three, four days after, I decided going down, and my mum's like putting cream on me and stuff. And you know, I'm more of a mummy's boy. It's been a past a week now after the fight, and you can't really tell I've been in, the, in a fight. <laughs> While she's not willing to watch him in the ring, 
Amir's mother is very happy to attend a charity football match. I can't see fight. I never go there. I'm staying in hotel. And thank God it's Amir's one and it's uh, good for his coming home. <laughs> You're a better boxer than a football. <laughs> <laughs> you know, football is my second sport. Oh, you need two left feet. Which other? You are going, man. You what? For the young Khan, boxing provided a route out of trouble, motivating him to help others follow his example. The gym. By building a gym in Bolton. You might have to push the bell. I ain't got a key for the place. <laughs> Bye. Khan opened gloves in 2007. For a fee of five pounds, local kids get annual membership. My dream was to become world champion, and for kids out there, I want them to do the same. Wake up in the morning and have an ambition in life. So what's that? Is that good? I've got a clue. <laughs> so is it, is it over 80 you pass? Yeah, I think so. Over 80, innit? Yeah. So you've done well there, man. He's quite a lot of hard work in it, innit? Be a big role model, than he, For the little youth and that. Yeah, because he's like one of the first Asian boxers to like represent Bolton. Being a role model comes with responsibilities. Khan's image is tied up in being an exemplary Muslim, earning him the honour of laying the first brick at his local mosque. I laid the brick around this section somewhere. The first brick was laid. But Khan is still learning the perils of fame and a recent tabloid splash called into question his clean Muslim image. It just shows I'm human and I'm normal, just like everyone else. You know, I still do probably silly things now and then, but I'm still normal. It just shows how, you know, I've got all eyes on me, and I have to make sure, you know, I'm careful what I do and stuff. I think it's important that he, he does realise that there's certain things where a normal person would get away with it, where he can't, you know, and they make a big issue out of it, you know. Um, but, you know, these things happen and these are the prices you have to pay for fame, really. You know, it's the first time it's happened to me, so it's giving me a wake-up call in, in everything, you know, because sometimes I forget how big I am. I just need to be a bit more professional in that department. This is my team! <laughs> the winning mentality from the champ now, it rubs off on the team. It rubs off, definitely. To Khan and his family, it is a great source of pride that his success has not tempted him away from his roots. Not changed him at all, you know. Uh, he's still the same kid. Uh, he has the same friends out there. But the thing is, he's still comfortable with his own friends who was there with him when he was nothing. People ask me, is he, is he the next Manny Pacquiao? Is he the next seven-time world champion? We have a long way to go before that happens. He's still a baby. He still has a lot to learn. He's won a world title early in life. But it's, um, it's been a good run so far. In the success story of Amir Khan, his faith and Pakistani roots have worked both as obstacles and a constant source of strength. With what I want to bring to the boxing is, I want to bring the Muslims into it, I want to bring the Christians, the Jewish community, I want to make all the different communities into boxing and support me. I love being a role model and you know, being this uh, young British Muslim uh, fighter. Boxer, it's, it's, a, it's a good title for me.